I'm honored and privileged to be sitting down with Jim Blasco at Coin Agenda 2021. Thank you, Jim, for joining us. Who's Jim Blasco? I don't know. <laughs> Good. Now, tell us about Aspire. What's new? Uh, wow. What's new? Well, people are building on it. That's new. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we first made it and launched it, it was like, hey, here's a platform. You can make your own cryptocurrency. Come check it out. Um, and then that was kind of it for a while. You know, I didn't really, we weren't sure how to get the ball rolling. And, uh, what are these Pokemon boxes over here? Uh, no. Are those yours? No. There's Pokemon cases in here. Ooh. We have to bring, I gotta bring it up some of this. Someone's collecting Pokemon, look at this. Sorry, I know this isn't crypto, but this is funny. Guess what's in here? The Ruin Agenda pen stash. We have found the pens. Awesome. Too bad it's not Pokemon cards. We've got lanyards in here too. Alright, so, yeah, so it's really cool because this year all of a sudden people started building on us. And NFT Studios came out and, or it's coming out in about three weeks. They've announced uh, the, the project's in beta. I've used it, it works. It's fast, it's, it's cool. It builds NFTs using Aspire's blockchain and platform. But it's not on our wallet, they have their own wallet. So it's, it's man, I'm happy to see it. I met some people here who claim they're gonna fix our decks. Let's hope that's true. I believe them. Oh, we have guests. Hey, come on in. Look, he's holding a spire paper. Right, we're gonna be uh, interviewing him. Hey, let me see that. Last. Somebody just walked in here. Are these your Pokemon boxes? No. <laughs> oh, okay. And they actually have a spire paperwork, so. You can check this stuff out on aspire.tech. It just shows you how to use the wallet. Very cool stuff. If you want one of these, let us know. Also, if any of your fans, if they want some crypto, hit me up, send me your address, I'll send you enough coins that you can make your own cryptocurrency on Aspire for free. There you have it. Tell us about NFTs. NFTs, that's what's hot this week. That's what's been hot for yeah, about a year. Hot, yeah. I, um, I think it's actually the biggest thing in uh, blockchain since Bitcoin. I don't know, uh, it is right now. Mm -hmm. See, blockchain goes through phases, or Bitcoin, you know, this whole space goes through phases. So at first it was the, the craze of Bitcoin, and that was the big keyword for years. And then blockchain was the big keyword. And it's been recently NFTs, it almost passed altcoins and went straight to NFTs, but a lot of those NFTs live on the altcoins, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's given altcoins a really a new presence in the market where it's not just Bitcoin. You know, there's the, the Ethereum group on Facebook with 475,000 users, I'm one of the admins there. You can see the increase. We were 250,000 users a year ago. So it's growing fast. Everything's growing fast. Aspire's growing fast. We're happy with the real natural organic growth of Aspire. Slow and steady is always good. Wins the race. That's how Satoshi wanted it too. So Ethereum it, group on Facebook grows double. Uh, do you attribute that to DeFi or NFTs? A little bit of both? both? Absolutely both. And uh, I think alternatives to Bitcoin. You know, the fees were a big problem all of a sudden. So people started looking into other things. That's why we built Aspire because we wanted to do something that was really good for the fees, for the community. It's a great pro uh, uh, problem to solve in this community. You know, because there's so many users that are paying so much in fees. What if we just eliminated that? What if we made it almost free, you know? Like, that's kind of what we're doing with Spire. What's the biggest challenge that you faced building a blockchain and how did you overcome it? Well, I mean, I've built a lot of them. So, I mean, I've got a little bit of experience in that world now. Um, the biggest problem was, I'd say, oh my gosh. Figuring out the right method to make it fast and keep transactions at a good level, um, so the right block size, the, the right amount of transactions per minute you know, or per second, uh, the right, right amount of uh, speed in the blockchain for blocks to get to different, because we use a technology called advanced checkpoints, so we checkpoint every block uh, to make sure that it's coming from our block producers, to make sure that there's no 51% attack or somebody trying to overtake the chain, you know, a problem that you've seen in the past. Well, we solved that. Uh, but there's a lot of things, that was probably the hardest thing, I think, was stopping the double spending on blockchain that wasn't a big problem. 
Bitcoin is so well spread out, you know, and as versus a, a new blockchain that starts is not. So you have to think of these things kind of ahead of time. And I've been around a lot of blockchains. I've seen a lot of problems and fixed a lot of them. So I'm pretty happy with what we built. Our underlying blockchain is called GAS, G-A-S-P. That's short for GAS protocol. What's next for blockchain? Isn't that what everybody wants to know? It's going to be gaming. It's going to be gaming. By far. Video games are going to take over in this industry. And I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And that's why I'm so thankful to have developers that are building games on our blockchain. It's, dude, it's so exciting. Gameplay, just, gameplay in a centralized environment with uh, items existing in blockchain? Or how do you view... Well, lots of play to earn, okay? That's the new big thing. NFTs, now P2E, right? And we're just always finding new things to add to this blockchain space. Or, but it's, this is gonna be the biggest one. Video gaming, it's gonna happen with all platforms. Everybody's gonna be blockchain and blockchain go. Atari already started. A gentleman uh, Chris critiqued a play to earn today. He said, I mean, are these not just like sweatshops in a way? How, how do how do we how do we ensure that the play is meaningful? I think it's play funny. Uh, sweatshops when people are sitting in their houses, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of far from a sweatshop environment mm -hmm. where you got somebody telling you to work until your hands bleed. You know, these these are people who have opportunities to play games and earn and learn at the same time. They can go get a job if they want. Nobody's making them play anything. There's just a benefit to do it now. Great. Any other comments? You should have been here. All right. Thank you so much, Jim, for sitting down with us today at Coin Agenda 2021. See you next time. In the broom closet. In the broom closet. Thank you. Excellent.